Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. We have the privilege of speaking with Barbados Ambassador to CARICOM, David Kamishong, in the flesh. I think this is the first time that we're talking face to face since 2020. Yeah. Since yeah. COVID. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so welcome back to me and welcome back to you too to the studio because I realized that you were here when Wendy was here mm -hmm. and then um, you were gone so you, last week we spoke online from Jamaica yeah from Jamaica so yeah. it's good to have you back in Barbados but today we want to discuss the recent meeting of the Prime Ministerial Subcommittee mm -hmm. on the CSME mm -hmm. uh, chaired by Prime Minister Motley of course mm -hmm. and uh, looking at the meeting and how it addressed various important mm -hmm. items on the agenda mm -hmm. so can we provide can you provide for us an update mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. on the implementation of a few of the things <coughs> um we're going to go in order so the decision on mm -hmm. free movement mm -hmm. within the csme mm -hmm. is a major talking point mm -hmm. at this time so what steps have been taken mm -hmm. to kind of enhance the movement mm -hmm. of caricom citizens mm -hmm. all throughout the region what place did that yeah. take in the meeting well, that is a top priority. But first of all, just to say that I thought we hadn't um, dealt with the CSME for a little while. So I thought it would be good to have a little report um, to bring our viewers up to date with what is happening. And um, just to recap, so the CS, the CARICOM single market and single economy is the deepest level of our integration. You know, we, we started with free, a free trade area. We then did um, functional cooperation, a common foreign policy, a common market. And then we said, look, let's get even deeper. A, a single market where we try to make the Caribbean community one single space where people move, businesses move, capital move, um, you know, skills move, and then the single economy where we harmonize our laws and regulations, etc. So that's what we embarked upon, and Prime Minister Motley has primary responsibility for it. And yes, one of the, the first item that we looked at at the meeting on, um, on Friday, the 14th meeting of the Prime Ministerial Subcommittee on the CSME was uh, implementing that decision for full freedom of movement. Um, we have this intergovernmental task force, which I am chairing. And yes, we are making progress. Uh, the whole idea is um, right now we have free movement based on skills. If you are a skilled person, you're a university degree holder, you're a nurse, you're a teacher, etc. But the whole idea now is to move beyond just skills and open it up to everybody. But I must say that there are a couple um, member states that will not be participating. So Bahamas will not be participating because the Bahamas has never joined the CSME. So they're, not, they're part of CARICOM but they never um, signed on to that deeper level of integration, which is the CSME. Haiti will not be participating because of the crisis situation that Haiti is in. Too much, too much instability, too many people just wanting to move, etc. And one other member state um, has indicated that because of its domestic circumstances, it may not be um, participating, but everybody else has committed to it. And our deadline is the end of March to kind of get all the um, amendments to the treaty in place. Although we do know that even, though, even if we get all of that done by the end of March, there will still be a transition period to put in place all the administrative procedures, amendments to national legislation, etc. But the good news is, Tisha, is that it is happening. The work is, the work is coming along. And, um, and we, we are confident that um, we, will, we, we hope to meet that 31st of March um, deadline. But even if we don't, um, we, it is within touching distance. All right. So when we talk about um, the CSME, um, another major thing is, of course, business and how we're able to mm -hmm. um, really harmonize laws and administrative procedures relating mm -hmm. to 
companies and business entities who then will want to do yeah. business obviously across the region yeah. talk to us about um the progress made in that specific yeah. area um, because i know you also looked at that yeah well <clears throat> a lot of work has been done um for example <clears throat> we want to have um mutual recognition of companies across the region so we want we if a company registers in barbados it is automatically registered in, in Jamaica as well or Antigua so that a company that wishes to do business in several CARICOM member states, you don't have to go and you know, register in one and then go and register in the other one. That's, that's money, that's time, uh, that's inconvenience. So we have, we have worked on a model company's um, bill um, that will be standard right across the, the region. We have worked on a model insolvencies bill, you know, for com companies that go bankrupt, that would be standard right across the region, um, limited partnerships bill. And um, we are also working on an, an online, a CARICOM online companies registry, where it'd be one electronic platform where, you know, you could see every, every company that is registered right across the the, the community. So these things are already in train. Uh, well, the online companies registry, there's a lot of work still to be done on that. But the various bills that I spoke about, they have already been drafted. They are now being fine tuned. And um, we are trying to get all of this ready by the major heads of government conference in July of this year. So progress is being made where, where that is concerned. I can see that there, you know, there will be a lot of work to do, particularly with something like the online, an online registry, region wide registry, mm -hmm. particularly here in Barbados. I mean, if you come up with a business name or what mm -hmm. have you, you have to ensure that mm -hmm. uh, there's a process of checking mm -hmm. that there isn't another mm -hmm. company which could present mm -hmm. some challenges. Mm -hmm. So for companies that might have similar names mm -hmm. and so on down the region mm -hmm. uh, i would imagine that those are things then that you'd have mm -hmm. to look at if mm -hmm. entities are going to be able to do business mm -hmm. in different territories yeah well there's a major consultancy that is um, is going to be put in place so that will be a major piece of work an online company's registry and you're right to mention um, business names because we have also drafted a common business names bill and a common trademarks bill so the whole idea is if we are treating our region as one single domestic space, we are bringing all the national spaces together and trying as best to make them one. Um, it means that we have to have common laws in place. And yes, um, the online, the, the, the common online registry that will give you at a finger, you know, at um, one platform to give you all of that information. That is going to be a, a major, a major piece of work. So that hasn't been done yet, but the CARICOM has um, arranged funding to hire, um, uh, you know, the experts that are going to um, carry out that work for CARICOM. But the, the various bills, the trademark bill, the, the company's bill, um, the business names bill, insult, all of those are already drafted and are now just being fine-tuned, hopefully for um, July of this year. Oh, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. That spells opportunity mm -hmm. uh, because all of a sudden, the small manufacturers, the entrepreneurs, not only here in Barbados, but across the region, mm -hmm. then they have a, a, an entire playing field mm -hmm. throughout that's the region the to be able to uh, apply their trade, mm -hmm. supply their services and goods. So. That's great news. Another thing that is good news for me is you guys are also working on the CARICOM Competition Commission, uh, which of course will play a very vital role in ensuring fair competition within the region. And the two really go hand in glove if we're talking about business, then of course we have to look at fair competition. So how does it function as uh, an authority for countries that are lacking regulatory bodies? So we know that here in Barbados, right. we have our own Fair Trading Commission. Um, but, you know, how will it work for, for other countries who may not be on, on par or up to speed uh, where we are when it comes to fair trading? So, so CARICOM has an institution called the CARICOM Competition Commission. It's located in um, Suriname. 
And it is supposed to do for the region what our Fair Trading Commission does for Barbados. That is um, to monitor and police um, trading, trading practices to make sure that there are no monopolies, there's fairness, consumer rights are protected, et cetera, et cetera. Um, however, there are certain CARICOM member states that don't have fair trading commissions. So most of, all of the OECS countries, none of the OECS countries have um, fair trading commissions like, like the Barbados Fair Trading Commission, neither does Belize or Suriname. So the idea has taken root. Um, so we have, this, um, we have this regional institution that provides this regional service, but since there are some member states that don't have national bodies why don't we give that regional body um, the mandate to also be a national institution for those countries, like, like the CCJ. So the CCJ, Caribbean Court of Justice, it, um, it applies the regional law pertaining to um, CARICOM, the revised treaty of Chagaramas, but it, it is also the, the, the top national court for a number of CARICOM member states. So that's the idea that we are, that we are working on. And, um, and, you know, even the idea is beginning to take root that not just for, for, for it to police um, fair competition, but maybe also um, public utilities regulation, you know. And uh, so, yes, that's, that's something that we are working on. Um, there's a working group working through what amendments would you need to make to the um, the rules and regulations of the Car CARICOM Competition Commission so that it could also become a national um, entity for various countries. Yeah. Something that I think also might tie in is uh, the, the public procurement regime, which mm. obviously, you know, they all tie in together and the interactive marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, so where are we with, with those? Mm -hmm. uh, I know we talked about a June implementation mm -hmm. for a few things, mm -hmm. but this is a great deal of work mm -hmm. to be able to advance the cause of the Caribbean single market and single economy. Yeah, well, the, what you have just referred to are two um, online platforms. So there's something called the CARICOM Interactive Marketplace and Suspension Procedure. <laughs> it's called the SIMSU Pro. But basically what it is, it is a new CARICOM program that um, permits businesses across the region to kind of put their information on the platform so you, you, could, you could inform all across the region what, you, what goods you are producing and you have available um, for supply. Um, because, you know, we have this um, CARICOM, we have this common external tariff where what we are trying to do we are trying to keep the regional market for our own producers. And we put up a, a tariff against um, foreign um, uh, exporters to, 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 to the region. So we try to protect our own, our own producers. But um, we need to know, we need to know who is producing what. Um, because the rules say, if there's no production in CARICOM, then you could suspend the, the common external tariff so that you could bring in outside goods duty free. But we don't want to be doing that and bringing in if outside it goods. Made if, air. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But then you need information. So yes. people need to know. So we have developed this online platform. It exists, but what now needs, but not a lot of people, not a lot of businesses know about it. So the whole idea now is to do the public education, to get the information out there. So we want um, Barbadian businesses to make use of it, put your information on the platform. Um, the Ministry of, of Industry, Science and Technology, they would have responsibility for that within, um, in Barbados. So, they, so you're going to, we're going to roll out a program um, to, to spread the word and to get many more businesses to participate in that platform. The other thing is, the other thing, the, the um, public procurement is something similar as well. That is where our governments have said, look, when we have governmental contracts of a certain size, okay, if they're, very, if they're small contracts, we reserve them for our nationals. But if the contracts for either to purchase goods or to do 
services to do work. If they're above a certain size, we are going to open it up to bidding um, right for businesses right across the region. So we're going to share. We're going to share and we're going to give everybody a chance. And um, so six, six member states have signed on to that program, including Barbados. And we, we are putting the arrangements in place to launch, to launch that program. So those six member states, they will share information with each other. These are the major government contracts. Um, you can bid. So we could bid. Our businesses could bid for a government contract in Antigua, um, in Belize. Likewise, their businesses could bid for government contracts in Barbados, provided those government contracts are above um, a certain a certain size. So that's six of uh, maybe 15 or so. What are some of the reasons that some of the countries I know we mentioned uh, with the movement movement? Uh, obviously, there was Haiti and Bahamas, mm -hmm. and they had their particular, you mm -hmm. know, unique happenings mm -hmm. in their countries as to why they've not signed on. Mm -hmm. But why? Why are? What are some of the reasons why we're not seeing more countries, for example, mm -hmm. uh, coming on board for something like this that seems uh, a, a region-wide yeah. procurement uh, type arrangement? Uh, well, typically, sounds, what happens, and, and this is this is this is what kind of holds back progress in CARICOM. Typically, what happens is that the country agrees in principle. Okay, so we agree in principle, but then we have to do national consultations. We have to consult with our stakeholders, and then our technocrats have to look at what is being proposed. And some countries are more diligent than others. Some take much longer with their national consultations. Some um, are much more finicky with um you know some some people would say well it may not be perfect but it's good enough let's go other countries now will be much more finicky finicky and will be you know picking at that technical detail and the other um technical details so it tends it that's how caricom tends to operate um there tends to be a lag a decision is made um there are certain member states that i tend i guess tend to act with more alacrity and expedition um, some um, tend to take their time. So, so far, six of the, the member states have agreed to that, have signed that protocol for public um, procurement. Um, the others, I guess, is, I'm not sure that any of them have any disagreements in principle that, look, we don't want to open up our government contracts to um, bidding from other um, businesses in other CARICOM countries. I don't think anyone has said that. But it's probably uh, um, about they're still carrying out their national consultations, etc. All right. So uh, time is growing slim, as it often does uh, with the our conversations. The main one we need to talk about, though, is air and maritime transportation, because I yes. think that is what <laughs> I most mean, like, of the there's viewers so many other would be things, interested um, in. The tariffs which <laughs> tie in with all we've been talking about uh, in terms of trade and so yeah. on. And then front of packaging labels yeah. is something that well, we can revisit as well. But like you said, transport, very, yeah, very important. Yeah, yeah I, I, I believe that of all the items we covered at that meeting, um, that is the good news that um, viewers would, would most want to um, you know, fixate on, because there is good news um, in the area of well, air transportation. So you know, we have we we have this crisis situation, but airlines are stepping up. So you have Inter Caribbean now the, expanding the chief operations officer in yesterday. Yeah, expanding its services right across the region. I came in last week on the inaugural direct flight from from Jamaica. Jamaica. Right, so we have Inter Caribbean um, coming to the party. Um, we have Suriname Airways now doing flights from Suriname to Guyana and to Barbados. We have Caribbean Airlines also expanding um, its services, and um, Liat is coming back. Not not the original Liat, not Liat 1974, but Liat 2020. So it's, I think we're just about weeks away before there is a relaunch of Liat services. I think they're trying to put six planes um, in the air. So, so that is good news. Similarly, where sea transportation is concerned, good news again. Um, Barbados, uh, Guyana, Trinidad. and Trinidad. The governments have come together. Trinidad government is making one of its ferries available for transport 
for ferry service between these three countries. That is coming on stream, I, I would imagine, probably in, in a matter of weeks, a couple of months at, perhaps at the most. And there's also a private sector consortium called Connect Carib, and they have announced that they too will be launching um, a ferry service that will take in much wider than um, that, that one with the governments that will take in Barbados, Suriname, Guyana, Trinidad, Grenada, St. Lucia, all the way up to Antigua. And that is scheduled to come on stream in the last quarter of this year. So I think of all of the things we discussed at the meeting, this was perhaps um, the most positive. You also mentioned the front of um, package labeling. Labels, yes. That will interest viewers as well because we have, we have an organization called the um, Caribbean Regional Organization for Standards and Quality, CrossQ. Cross it's, it's located right here in, in Barbados. Yes. And they, they are leading the charge um, to beef up um, our packaging. You know, when we manufacture our food products, that we must have modern labeling that gives consumers all of the relevant information, uh, the health related information on the package. So that work is very far advanced and that should be rolled out around about April of, of this year. Oh, so things are happening. Yeah, that's excellent. And uh, I wanna thank you for sharing mm -hmm. uh, so that we're made aware of what's happening. And uh, you know, in, in this detailed way in sh mm -hmm. such a sh short space mm -hmm. of time, but where do we sit in terms of the consultation? I know you said there are some countries that go to mm -hmm. their citizens, obviously key stakeholders and mm -hmm. so on would be brought into conversations on things that relate to them. Mm -hmm. But where do we sit in Barbados mm -hmm. in terms of engaging with mm -hmm. the public? Mm -hmm. So uh, people, you know, en masse are aware mm -hmm. of, of some of these changes mm -hmm. and, and what's happening. Well, we have something called the Business, Labor and Civil Society Consultative Council. We call it the Black. That is where we engage in um, discussions, um, consultation with um, entities that represent the Barbados private sector um, um, and, and the trade union movement, civil, civil society. Um, but in terms of specific projects, um, that pertain to, um, you know, particular entities within the society, the various government ministries would normally, you know, pull in their stakeholders and do that, do that specific um, consultation. So, for example, if it's something relating to this, the CARICOM interactive marketplace, the SIMS, the SIMSU Pro, um, the Ministry of Industry, uh, Science and Technology, they would be engaging with um, um, business companies in Barbados that do regional export and, and so forth. Um, this program, Tisha, this um, Conversations on CARICOM, um, which I think is unique across the region, I don't think there's any other CARICOM member states, member state that um, on a weekly basis um, on national television, they're discussing the, the CARICOM agenda. This is part of our our process of public education as well, sharing information about CARICOM. But the formal, the, 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 the formal bodies are the Business, Labor and Civil Society Council. And we also have an inter-ministerial consultative council that, but that has to do with government officials who we bring together periodically to look at the CARICOM agenda and how Barbados is, is implementing it. And, now that you mentioned that, in fact, coming out of this last meeting, um, Prime Minister Motley has um, ordered that we should set up a kind of hybrid committee between the Black, the Business, Labour and Civil Society, and the Interministerial um, Committee, a kind of hybrid committee to work specifically on um, the matters pertaining to the regional capital market, the region regional securities market in, you know that part of the um, single market and single economy that has to do with the movement of, of capital and businesses etc so Barbados we are going to we are going to be paying very very close attention to all of those matters pertaining 
to the bis regional business, um, movement of regional capital, etc. And um, that's because that's, that's like the hardest part of the CSME. It seems as if that's the most technical part and it seems as if that's the most difficult part um, to build out. So we, we're going to set up a special committee um, to focus on that. All right, good stuff. I don't know if it's um, in the works or if it's implemented already because we talk about so much. Mm -hmm. But I would like to see personally a, a citizen group of sorts. Mm -hmm. That's a part of some of these discussions as well because we know, mm -hmm. you know, even though we make all these strides all across the region, mm -hmm. um, you know, regular Barbadians want to feel like they're part mm -hmm. of the decision-making process as well mm -hmm. and uh, it's great to be able to share mm -hmm. on national TV too mm -hmm. but I would love to see a citizen group of mm -hmm. something of that sort that is a part of some of these mm -hmm. deep discussions on free movement and travel mm -hmm. uh, across the region and how we're working toward mm -hmm. a Caribbean mm -hmm. a true yeah. single market and yeah. single economy. I think what you're talking about is um, regular town hall meetings and we had we had CARICOM had in fact started that Prior to COVID, remember there was actually uh, one or two he right here in Barbados, where um, Prime Minister Motley, as the as the lead Prime Minister for the CSME and the Secretary General of of CARICOM, they made the major presentations and took um, questions and comments from the town hall audience. Yeah. And yes, you're quite right. We had decided that 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 was going to be a fixture in the CARICOM agenda. But of course, COVID came along, COVID interrupted that, and it has never been, it has never been restarted. But I will, take, I will take that idea back to, um, sure. to CARICOM to say that, there's, you know, that this was a good and positive thing, and it needs to be restarted. All right, excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to thank you, as always, for coming mm -hmm. in. Always great to catch up and hear exactly what's happening mm -hmm. all across the region mm -hmm. and how our leaders are working toward this single economy, which we need mm -hmm. really to be viable in this big world. <laughs> big space, yes. Yes. We're small, we're, you know, we're a small entity trying to fight with the big boys. And the only way to do it properly is, is to come together, integrate and unify. Absolutely. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning to you.